right. Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about some of the global trends that are going to be affecting cybersecurity in 2024. Now, obviously, that's a very general topic, so we're going to get down to some of the specifics. And I just want to kick it over to Kelly West to get started. Thanks, Dylan. Last week, mid-November, The Economist every year does this. They do their world ahead. They're a great source for sort of the overarching trends in the global environment. This isn't technology. It's not security specific. It's to help everyone predict what will be happening in the next year. They talk about conflict in Europe, conflict in the Middle East, heightened tensions globally in the geopolitical environment. They talk a great deal about AI. AI shows up everywhere, essentially every trend list you're going to look at. And they talk about the green transition, how that's impact in this overarching environment. Then we need to look at technology trends. Cybersecurity is by its very nature, just using here as a source gardener, they put together their trend report, the top uh, strategic technology trends for 2024. And they didn't put it into a prioritized list, order these things in any way. They drew on a number of trends that they see happening in 2024 and grouped them, uh, protecting investment, uh, how they term it. And Gartner, of course, always uses their own terminology to define categories. You see a number of overarching technology trends around AI, trust, risk, security management, threat exposure management, AI, augmented development. You see AI democratized, generative AI. So you can see how important it is. It's essentially already taken 30% of the top trends list. AI itself is not just one trend. There are all the ways it will be applied, et cetera. Machine customers, arguably another way that AI will influence where more and more, it's not necessarily people that are interacting with technology, but technology interacting with technology. So you see amongst all of these trends, the sort of context in which the cybersecurity trends will take place. And then finally, and I just used two examples, they're not just technology trends, but cybersecurity trends. Just taking a few out of Forbes' top list, AI was showing up, of course, on both sides of cybersecurity, AI to defend, AI to attack. If you look across at cybertalk.org list, you see AI at the top, and then you see API security. And I just want to draw a parallel. The Internet of Things cyber attacks and API security, these are both just new threat surfaces that are exposed. And so there's new attack vectors that cybersecurity has to, to pay attention to that have become increasingly important. Less than zero trust architecture, zero trust architecture. These were on the 2023 list. It takes time for people, tech companies to react to these trends. And we're seeing regulation and other AI impacts in citizen generated products. Overall, that just kind of sets a context for the, the trends that we're gonna talk about and the things that are influencing. As you mentioned there, that was a great overview. But I just wanted to direct a question to Oscar. So Kelly had mentioned that there's going to be a lot of, you know, environmental trends impacting cybersecurity. So I just wanted to, if you could maybe go into a bit more detail about some of the you know, geopolitical economic trends we're seeing, you know, some of the details of how you think that's going to affect cybersecurity in 2024 and beyond. If you look geopolitically, it's uh, definitely, Kelly mentioned it already, conflicts are increasing, but it's also conflicts between highly developed countries are using all kinds of cyber and electronic warfare as part of their arsenal. Probably one of the most effective parts of their arsenal that has multiple impacts. Also, it creates a lot of investment dollars into these type of technologies, which unfortunately has have a negative spin-off on compromises you know, becoming available. So it it's effectively leads to more investments into cyber arms race that can impact any type of organization. I think what also is happening is that because of these conflicts, it legitimizes cyber attacks, not only from criminals, but also from nation states. I remember that 10 years ago, I worked for a technology company and we were doing our threat intelligence kind of discussions and doing our threat assessments. We thought, well, we're, we're never going to be a target for a, a nation state, but they're going after the NSA and all kinds of other yeah, organizations, but uh, definitely not after us. But that has changed. SolarWinds was attacked by a, an agent state, and actually uh, the government is taking action against SolarWinds and, and their CISO, as an example, and just because they weren't well enough protected against that. And, and so we're seeing that going to increase. So very much the political landscape is going to have an impact. 
on us and making cybersecurity even more important. And economically, it's, it's kind of going a little bit the other ways where we're seeing kind of, you know, leveling off of growth. And that often has the impact that budgets are, you know, uh, going to get constrained in special areas like security. People immediately look to, well, can we save some money there? So I think a lot of security uh, managers and executives will, will have to look at that. And so you get this complicated uh, situation where on the one hand, the trend is to get more investments in cybersecurity on the bad side of things. And that, you know, if you're defending, then you're being asked to cut your budget and tighten your belt. You know, how is that going to work together? And then on, on the other hand, on the technology side, AI is coming. So, But of course, that's probably also an additional investment, so an additional cost. It also is going to help uh, the bad guys as well. So it's it's not necessarily the trend is your friend. And you had mentioned that you know conflicting p- push and pull from uh, restricting economic conditions, but also increase heightened security risks. Do you think that's going to affect the technologies uh, that companies are choosing in cybersecurity? You know the the types of uh, technologies that they're implementing or prioritizing. Well, I think they have got to be forced to prioritize and really look at what are the top level risks, where are they coming from, and so where. You know, how can I spend my scarce security dollars as wisely as possible? Right. And so, but we're seeing that known vulnerabilities are, are routinely being exploited now with continuous warnings from uh, CISA and the FBI uh, to take care of that. And, and industry is still responding relatively slowly. That's definitely hygiene or basic things that still, you know, need to get in place across a lot of industries. Some industries are there, but not everybody. Kelly, you had been uh, mentioning, you know, AI taking up, you know, a third of that matrix in the, in the Gartner report that you had mentioned. Um, so, you know, the, the use of AI, you know, in, in generative AI specifically is showing up, you know, everywhere. What are some of the important considerations of, of AI relating to, you know, application and, and cybersecurity uh, that we should be thinking about in 2024? The AI topic is its own large topic. Um, one of the things they talked about was threat exposure management. And so that's a very Im- important aspect of the trends overall. I think it relates to the geopolitical tensions that Oscar's talking about, you know, where it becomes more acceptable to even attack the economy of, of a nation if they're not in the, in the block of allies you have. And so threat exposure management is going to be an increased focus all around, not just as it relates to AI. And, and I think that a major trend in the development of applications that's just happening in parallel is platform engineering. And this is about how applications are developed and how the teams work and and what it means for the way they work. And it's going to shift responsibilities around. But let me start in on AI question, because I do think, as you said, it's taken up 30% of the list. One of the ones that I would highlight is that non-technologists are going to be able to generate websites and applications using AI. And AI is going to be then essentially be writing the code. This is new for how applications are created. How is that going to fit into the processes of ensuring that the applications created in this way are secure? And so, for example, what components are AI going to include in the application? You know, it's very common for developers to use open source components. What's AI going to do that way? What's it going to bring in? What are the implications to the software licenses? What are the implications for vulnerabilities and security? Uh, It's going to be very important to treat this new way that applications are created uh, properly from a security assessment perspective and get the correct tools in place to ensure that since there's no eyes on it. But I think there's other important aspects as well. It will accelerate a trend that we've seen over a, like a long-term trend. I mean, if you go back 20, 25 years, you know, perhaps 50% of an application was external libraries. And often you actually were buying external libraries. Now they've all become open source and made them effectively more accessible. So that has now increased to 80 to 90%. And I think by generating applications through AI tools, that's going to increase further. And we're also going to increase the, the amount of code that we are actually producing because now it's going to be generated. So this means it's going to be more code out there. There's going to be more known more libraries with ultimately known vulnerabilities, right? Because even if we generate the perfect environment right now, and there's no vulnerabilities in the libraries that are underlying these websites that have been created. In six months, there will be a few vulnerabilities in them. And in 12 months, a few more. And are we, you know, ongoingly going to manage that? Are your AI tools going to do that? Very likely not. So it, it just increases 
the amount that we need to look after. And uh, yeah, that's definitely an important element that you want to automate that and you want to make sure that that's going to be a smooth and, and efficient process because uh, otherwise it becomes unmanageable for organizations. Probably part of the continuous threat exposure management trend that, uh, that Gartner had been talking about. So, you know, as you're using these tools and, you know, more and more tools, to, like Kelly said, write the code for you, you know, how, how, you know, what do companies need to do to, you know, build up and maintain a program that helps them with, you know, continuous threat exposure management? We've done some uh, work in the past that way where we talked about the prioritization of tools and that that will be an important aspect. And I think that's just, you know, j for laying a foundation, you, you're going to need to have a solid foundation in place. And, and then there's going to be additional work you, you need to do. So Kelly, you had mentioned there's there's a trend and a push towards platform engineering. So I thought maybe we'd, we'd revisit that here. And uh, what impact do you think that platform engineering is going to have on um, developer productivity and, and you know the approaches to application security that companies are taking? The platform engineering trend is actually quite an important one because it's uh, part of the evolution of how software and applications are developed. When organizations are younger, they'll tend to just have a development team. And the development team is responsible for everything one way or another. Um, and then as that organization matures or gets larger, they might have a security team and a development team. And a lot of the cybersecurity space uh, will focus on how that security team and development team need to work together to be productive. Once a platform engineering team is put in place, and, a, and just to clarify for anyone who might not be familiar with the phrase, a platform engineering team actually is a team dedicated to providing the tools and structures and, and processes in many cases that the development team will use to uh, develop the application. So a platform team is specifically focused on assisting the developers with productivity but they sit in a natural place to become the interface to the security team. So it helps to focus the relationship between teams and maybe most importantly, it localizes decision-making over security tools and the operation of those tools. In previous discussions that we've had as a group, we talked about how you can get your security tool implemented when you need multiple stakeholders to buy in and in an agile environment, a development a group will have multiple agile teams and you, you want to put in, say, you know, a software composition analysis tool. Somebody's got to do it first in one of those teams and then maybe, you know, in show the other teams it's working. Well, when platform engineering comes into place, that's not the way it works anymore. It's the platform engineering team that really would put the tool set in place. And so it helps uh, prioritize the tools more easily. It helps operationalize them. I think it will help organizations that are following that trend to get the security tools in place. But I wouldn't want to ignore the question of, you know, when Gardner puts together these technology re trend reports, they're focused on very large organizations that are probably at that mature end of the spectrum. For smaller organizations, they have to think, okay, we are not ready for a platform team, but what can we do to ensure that we're putting some decision-making structure in place so that we can choose the security tools we need in order to be properly positioned to defend against all, all of the trends that we're discussing. And I think that can be a really important consideration for them. It's a lot of information about, you know, things we're seeing in, in um, 2024, but uh, what do you think is going to spill over from 2023? Well, definitely, I think uh, zero trust is kind of a long-term prediction. To be honest, zero trust is a very hard bar for organizations to meet and a lot of organizations it might not be a realistic target to hit and so that's one part of the reason that a lot of organizations have paid lip service to it but haven't really been able to to implement it right because theoretically speaking zero trust makes a lot of sense obviously it's clear to everyone that that would dramatically improve security of the organization but getting there is a long journey and so that's not something that we do in a year and for a lot of organizations that they might not even uh, ever achieve. So I think that's why perhaps uh, we're going to see some some kind of other targets that are a little bit less than zero trust, but go, going in that direction that, that are more realistic for a lot of organizations. I think there's another one that probably really got started in 2023 and, and is a result of one of the trends they're even citing for 2024, which is increased uh, regulatory uh, focus on cybersecurity. And that's the software bill of materials or SBOM uh, requirements that are, are showing up. 
And just by listing out all of the components in software, it, it raises the awareness around those components. And so it's going to necessarily raise the awareness around vulnerabilities in those components, which is the intent. And the, the whole ecosystem for software bill of materials and SBOMs is still very young and is going to be maturing during 2024. But I, you know, really got it started in 2023. And I think we're going to see that um, being an important part of the trends in cybersecurity, not because it's necessarily purely security focused, but because the, you just can't focus on a software bill of materials without uh, security coming along with it. The number of the trends are, are kind of coming together here as well. Right? On the one hand, you know, the environmental pressure basically means more effort has to be put in cybersecurity. At the same time, you know, they're potentially a budget crunch. But then with the shift to the platform security, I think there's an opportunity for companies to deal with these issues more efficiently and especially to get the kind of the basics in place as a step towards zero trust and to the regulatory pressures around SBOM, for instance. Platform security can handle known vulnerabilities uh, right, with SCA tools and SBOM tools and make sure that that is kind of pervasively in place across the organization that also lay immediately the foundation for the next steps towards uh, zero trust as well. All right. So uh, to wrap up the discussion, you know, I'm hearing that there's going to be quite a few factors driving increased priority on application security in 2024. Geopolitical increased urgency uh, caused by geopolitical and economic concerns, especially some of the, the conflicts uh, between more developed nations with more developed security or threat programs. And that's going to be investing more and more in cybersecurity where they haven't before. There's also going to be the economic concerns of constricting budgets for securities that's going to be pushing against that. So companies are going to be focused on um, finding efficient ways to increase their overall security. And so, you know, one of the things that's going to be leveraged on both sides of the battle is AI. So, you know, this is, you know, AI has the potential to be, you know, a cost effective way for companies to generate intelligence that they weren't able to generate, you know, manually, don't have the manpower to. But it is also going to be utilized by attackers to generate threats as well as um, potentially AI are generating software or um, generated websites, generated, you know, pieces of code with uh, vulnerabilities in them, which attackers might leverage. We're also going to be seeing managing threat exposure will be critical. And so that means, you know, managing threats in your software supply chain, you know, merge base does come into the cybersecurity trends there. You know, companies are going to be needing to monitor open source threats more than ever. As well, we're going to be seeing approach to dev and SecOps that needs to be more efficient, and that might be having a platform engineering team. You know, that's it's wh whether we see platform engineering really take off this year is, is uh, still to be seen, but companies are going to be aiming for a way to make their programs more efficient. We are also seeing uh, as a continuing trend from 2023, the governments are pushing for more regulation. A software, including a focus on uh, software bill of materials or SBOM, uh, as a as a way to under those regulations or you know be in compliance and um, uh, again companies are also going to be focusing on getting a solid foundation for application security in place securing their supply chains and um, that's going to be critical to face all these changes coming in 2024. All right, well thank you both um, for joining me today and you know uh, thanks for talking about some of these top trends of 2024 uh, and we'll see you all next time. Mm -hmm.